So, uh, we have another vehicle to show you. This isn't anything fancy schmancy, but this does represent an era before SUVs and station wagons were all the rage. Um, when you see a wagon like this with the wood paneling on the side, basically it's the Country Squire trim level. You know, uh, wood paneling was kind of big back in the day. Here's your Country Squire. But um, that was more or less the higher end uh, trim level. So that being said, this is a 1973, if I'm not mistaken, LTD wagon. The engine has been borrowed in transmission. It was a 400, air-conditioned car, power disc brakes, power steering, pretty well loaded for its day, but that's now gone. Some people would call this a donor car, but I think it's restorable. Um, rest of it's all there, and you could really do something cool with this. Uh, resto mod it with a modern engine, and uh, have all the amenities of a new vehicle with the cool ass look of a wagon. Go around it real quick. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this car, but it's still a badass car for its era. It looks like original paint, which is nice. Arizona's been really nice to the uh, metal. So you're not gonna find any rot on the rockers. When you bought a wagon, this was kind of cool on this wagon. This wagon has an optional bucket seat split bench in a wagon. So they knew people wanted it to be cool still, right? But they had to buy a wagon because they had kids and a family. Hang on, I gotta set this down for a second. So to help the, all the dads out there who wanted, you know, some kind of coolness, they offered this trim. I can't remember what it was called, but anyway, high back bucket seats in your wagon. This one's I believe the original mileage, which is under 100,000. Someone had added cruise control. That's an add-on cruise control there. Uh, but it's again, really solid, rust free Ooh, it's a broom. Very solid floors. Well, the other side anyway. <laughs> Factory and radio, again, air condition. Of course, these cars had in-dash air condition, so you know, it was, wasn't under the dash, it was in the dash, which is kind of always a plus when you're buying a car like this. The middle row, these floors are also pretty good back here. But the middle row, of course, had a fold-down middle seat. So by that, you press this button right here, and we do that. Why they put it on the passenger side? I don't know. Seems like they should have put it on both sides of the button. You know, we fold it down. Lots more room for storage. And then in the back, I'll take you back there next. Of course, we got our luggage rack here, which is always cool. Gotta have that. Tinted windows, aftermarket. Take a look at the outside again here. So, uh, tailgate. I do have the handle for this. Well, handle goes right there. So these were known as dual action tailgate. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Back to the interior real fast. Some cars would have storage here, and then some cars would have what's called th third row seating. And third row seating meant that there was a back seat here, another one that faced backwards where they faced each other. This does not have the three row seating, but it's still cool nonetheless. You could always add it if you want it. Like if you have an extra car with an extra uh, parts car with third row seating, you bolt right in. No rust down there. And uh, 
your spare went in here. Which this one seems to be the jack and stuff seem to be missing. The other side of your tailgate. So generally speaking, see this lever right here? This guy can't do it right now because you have to roll the back window down. But if you want to, once you have the back window rolled down, you can reach in here and the tailgate would drop down like this. So there's the hinge for it to go one way. There's the hinge to open up, swing away. And if you want to drop down, you would take the key or use the uh, switch up front, roll down the back window, and this will just drop down like a normal tailgate. So dual action tailgate, they were pretty creative back in the day. Let's see, bumper is actually in good shape. It's got a nice trailer hitch on it. Let's see, it was last tagged in 84. Holy crap. Close to my graduation day. That explains the low mileage. So it's literally on the road, what, 10 years? 73, 74, up to 84. Wow. Kind of a shame. But it was forgotten, but it's not gone. Still around and still restorable, and it should be. Hey, cat. So this door won't open, so you know. It still opens fine. Shoot you a little more of the interior. Yeah, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this car, but you should know these cars are going up in value. They're definitely getting way harder to find. It's a shame a lot of them were used for uh, demolition cars back in the day, even up to like 10 years ago, for demolition derbies, because they were built like tanks. And uh, what better car to use for demolition derby than a car that's built like a tank, right? So, uh, Again, here's the split bucket seats. I mean, I think that's pretty cool. I got a couple of pieces right here in the glove box. I go with it. And uh, again, no rust or rot there. But then underneath this car, the floors are really solid, which you might expect. Hey, kitty cat. But there you go. Uh, 73, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 73. It's a three or four, I don't know, I can look at the title. The door tag will tell you also. Uh, LTD, wagon, one of the higher end wagons from back in the day, and the larger size, it's a full size wagon. They had an intermediate size as well, but different um, body style. Hey kitty cat. You go find something kitty? Kitty likes it. Oh, there's two kitties. Kitties give it their approval. Two paws up from the kitties. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so you, uh, while we're under here looking at the cats, let's look at the rockers. So, now, this would be cool with a coyote swap. Modern day coyote swap it. You got plenty of room under the hood. And uh, we got a storm coming again. Storm's coming to Tucson. But Coyote Swap this. Uh, fuel injected, of course. How cool. How cool. And actually, some of these were actually offered with uh, hideaway headlights. If I'm not mistaken this year, you could get hideaway headlights. I'm pretty sure. I know the earlier 60, like 70, 71s you could. So, um, hey, cat. Hi, guys. You guys, look, you're famous. You're on YouTube. See, there's other famous kitties on YouTube. They don't do anything cool as you guys. All they do is stupid stuff. You guys hang out with cool cars. Don't you, cats? Yes, we do. You guys eating any mice? Probably do. I'm sure there's a few around here. Um, what else can I tell you about this? Trim looks to be mostly all intact. Of course, stainless steel's in good shape. The chrome actually will shine up pretty nicely. It's a little dirty, but it will shine up nice. These uh, five mile an hour bumpers did their job back in the day. So, if you ever watched the movie Vacation, obviously they took one of the cars similar to this, a newer version of it, to the extreme. A little parody of a 
woody wagon but uh, that's it and we hope you enjoy it and um, these things have a story to tell and they all deserve a place in automotive history and being remembered and being uh, kept alive and uh, this one's no exception not by any means thanks for watching got plenty of more stuff coming up to show you so uh, keep an eye out for uh, what's coming up next you may be pleasantly surprised what we got adios amigos